Today on the audio hotline, I'm going to be doing a review of the Five Fine K688. For anyone who's interested in buying this broadcast style XLR USB microphone, it goes for around $72 to like $83. But today I'm going to take you through what comes in the box with it, the features, the specs. We'll test the absolute hell out of it. And I'll also do a blind comparison later in this video. This blind comparison will in fact include other microphones of a similar value, similar style. But most importantly, it will include the Five Fine K658, which is the microphone that came out that looks pretty similar to this one that is only a USB microphone. But speaking of the K658, I did review that microphone a little while ago. I did think it was a pretty solid microphone and actually the price has dropped pretty significantly on it. However, Fifine did a really great job of listening to the critiques and the criticisms that the K658 got from reviewers. And then they went in and pretty much changed all of that stuff and came out with this microphone, the K688. Quite honestly, anyone who's looking at the K658 I would probably redirect them to this microphone since it does have the XLR port and also some other enhancements, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But before we jump in and start talking about this microphone, there are two things that I want to disclaim, kind of discuss real quick. A while back, pretty much when I first started reviewing Fifine products, I asked them, like I should, how they would like their name to be pronounced. And what they told me is that the pronunciation would actually be Fine Fine. So I would say the last three or four Fine Fine products that I tried out, I actually said Fine Fine in the video because that's how they wanted me to pronounce it. So I did that. However, I'm going to go against what the company wants because I am so damn sick of seeing comments that say it's not Fine Fine, it's Fine Fine. But I'm over it. It's fine. You could actually say it's Fine Fine. Fine by me. Fine Fine by me. I mean, I will say the interaction and the comments for me saying fine, fine probably helped drive my videos, but for my mental health insanity, I'm sorry, fine, fine. I'm going to say your name, fine, fine. I got to do it. They made me. Just blame them. The evil commenters. Blame them. And the other thing that I do want to mention is that I was sent this microphone by Fi Fine. They are not sponsoring this video. They're not giving me any money. They just wanted an honest review in exchange for their product. Well, now that I've disclaimed that, discussed it, ranted a little bit, I just wanted to let you know that I am recording this microphone into my MacBook Pro, recording into Hindenburg. And the XLR cable I am currently using is a Telefunken cable. It's not very expensive. It's like $20. And that cable is going into my Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. But now let's go ahead and talk about what comes in the box if you decide to purchase the Fifine K688. The Fifine K688 will come with an 8.2 foot cable. It is a USB-C to USB-A cable. It will come with a 5 8 inch male to 3 8 inch female adapter. It will come with some documentation, as well as a shock mount that is permanently attached to the microphone, and that microphone being the K688. Now when it comes to what's included with this microphone and it being anywhere from $72 to $83, I think it's all very impressive. The cable that comes with this is really nice. The fact that it's over 8 feet long is great. Like some microphones I've tested out recently, I do wish that this came with the little USB-A to USB-C adapter. That would have been a nice touch, but I just had to end up using one that I already have, which I'm sure a lot of people do have those. Now, one thing that my good friend Bark told me from the channel Obscure Mics is that the windscreen just feels really weird. And I have to just completely <laughs> agree with him. It's like a velvety feeling. It's kind of bizarre. But if it works, that's great. We'll test out its efficiency here in a little bit but the build of the microphone itself does feel really good. The shock mount that is actually screwed into the microphone also does feel good. So overall, I do approve of the build and the accessories. Now, one thing that is kind of interesting with these broadcast style dynamic microphones is that a lot of them obviously are modeled after the Shure SM7B. This microphone right here. And one thing that people say about the SM7B is that you need to be really close, like right on top of it to get a really good spoken word sound. One of the reasons is that the SM7B is a very gain-hungry microphone. You really have to crank the gain to get a good signal out of it. The K688 really isn't that way. But one other thing that helps when you're close to the SM7B is that the capsule is actually recessed in this grill. So you should be able to see the fact that there is quite a bit of room right here, which definitely helps with air reaching the capsule and plosives. 
Now I'm recording with the Shure SM7B so I can show you this, but as you can see right here, there is like literally no gap whatsoever. So for a microphone like the Fine Fine, it's not going to be as forgiving with plosives up close like the SM7B would. But since it's already plugged in, here's a quick sound comparison of the Shure SM7B versus the Fine Fine K688. Some people get mad when I don't include the SM7B in videos like this, but here's just a real quick taste, a real quick comparison for you. So initially when I saw this design and that they were coming out with another one, I was thinking that they might actually have that diaphragm, that capsule, recessed in the grill a little bit, which would have been nice for plosives and everything. But it's not really a big deal that it isn't. I would just recommend being a little bit further away from this microphone than you would be like an SM7B. And also angling your microphone toward your mouth instead of talking directly into it is a good option. But now that we've talked about the accessories and build quality, now let's go ahead and talk about the features of the Fifine K688. On top of the K688, you will find a touch sensitive mute button. This will be green when the microphone is not muted and red when the microphone is muted. On the back of the microphone, there are two knobs. The one on top is the headphone volume control, and the one on bottom is to control the gain of the microphone. Next to that, you will see a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Above that, you will see your XLR jack. And on the far left side of the microphone, you will see your USB-C jack. Now, just fair warning, this does not come with an XLR cable, but there are some decent, inexpensive XLR cables you could check out. I'll link some down below. Now, when it comes to the features of this microphone, I feel like everything's there that I want to be there. The mute button up top is nice. In fact, here's a quick test. Here is the microphone unmuted, and now here is... Now it's back to unmuted. Hey, did it work? One thing to note is if you are going to be using an XLR cable, the mute function does not work with the XLR connection. Now I absolutely do love the dials for the gain and the headphone volume control. That's fantastic, I love having those. Also, I do love the USB XLR combination mic. I wish that every USB microphone had the optional XLR jack. And also I am very happy this is a USB-C connection. Now for the complaints that I have for the features, there's really only one. I don't understand why Fifine put the headphone volume control knob right next to the XLR jack and the gain knob right next to the headphone jack. To me, if they just switched those, that'd make way more sense. I was like actually kind of confused there for a minute. They are labeled and everything, so it's kind of nitpicky, but maybe there were some physical limitations with the size of the microphone or something and they had to do it that way. But I do wish they were the opposite, especially having the headphone jack right next to the headphone volume control. That would be nice. I always have to really think about it. In the first few times that I used this microphone, I was always bumping up my gain instead of my headphone volume. But now that we've talked about the accessories as well as the features, now let's go ahead and nerd out and talk about some specs. The Fifine K688 is a dynamic microphone with a cardioid polar pattern. This has a frequency response of 70 Hz to 15 kHz, a signal to noise ratio of greater than 75 decibels, a max SPL of 130 decibels, a sensitivity of negative 58 decibels. This has a max bit depth of 16 bit and a max sample rate of 48 kilohertz. Now I'll put a frequency response graph up on the screen so you can take a look at that. Now when it comes to the specs, the biggest negative for me is the fact that this does max out at 16 bit at 48 kilohertz. Is that good enough quality? Yes. But the fact that a lot of new USB microphones max out at 24 bit at 96 kilohertz, it almost makes this seem like it's not quite up to par, but in all reality, it's not the biggest deal. However, I do wish it was at least 24 bit at 48 kilohertz. Well, now I've talked about the accessories, the features, and the specs. Now let's go ahead and start testing this microphone out. Now I'm going to start by getting really close to this microphone and testing the proximity effect when it does not have a windscreen on. Now if I get really close to the microphone with the sexy velvet windscreen on, here's how it's going to sound. This next part's going to be loud. We're going to test the plosives with and without the windscreen. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Pickled peanutses. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Pickled peanutses. Now my air is mostly going past the microphone since it's angled at my mouth. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Pickled peanutses. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Pickled peanutses. I always feel kind of weird just staring directly into the lens and saying peanutses. <laughs> Now, if you were getting this microphone and you were planning on typing on just like a regular PC keyboard, nothing super loud, here's how this rejects that sound. 
Now if you're going to be typing on a really loud keyboard like this one that has some Cherry MX Blues on it, here's how it's going to sound. Now we're going to go ahead and take the polar pattern test one step further with some white noise. Now if you're about four inches from the microphone, here's how it sounds. Now if you're about a foot away from the microphone, here's how it sounds. Now if you're two feet away from the microphone wearing your audio hauntline shirt that you just bought, here's how it's gonna sound. Halloween's coming up, I had to do a special edition audio hauntline shirt, you get it, you get it. Now let's go ahead and do my favorite test of all time, the kitty purr test. And I probably won't have the windscreen on because it's gonna be covered in fur if I do. Here is just a real quick untreated room test for the Fifine K688. This room is very reverberant. It definitely has quite a bit of echo to it. It may not be a worst, worst case scenario room, but it's pretty bad. But given the fact that this is a dynamic microphone with a cardioid polar pattern, it should do a pretty good job of rejecting the room. It probably won't be perfect. Some of the reflections will definitely make it back to the microphone. But here's a quick example for anyone who's going to be recording in an untreated room. Now even though this isn't meant for musicians or anything, I'm still going to do a couple guitar tests. <laughs> So now I have the Fifine K658 plugged in going into my MacBook Pro, and I'm also recording the Fifine K688. I couldn't find the gigantic shock mount that comes with the Fifine K658. I don't know how you lose that thing, it's so big. So I just used a clamp as kind of like a microphone clip. Seems to be working well though. So I just wanted to give you a real quick back and forth on these two microphones to see how similar or how different they sound. And maybe if they do sound similar and you like the sound of the K658, you could still consider upgrading to get to the XLR jack that the K688 has. But even though I am doing this real quick comparison, I will still include the K658 in the blind comparison. Not only did I want to do a sound comparison, but I did want to just show these to you, even though I don't have the shock mount on this one. Just so you could see how they do have some similarities. I definitely don't miss the gigantic knob on top of the K658. I'm definitely more appreciative of the much smaller gain dial on the back of the microphone of the K688. But this has been your real quick sound comparison between the K658 from Fifine and the Fifine K688. But now let's actually jump into the main blind comparison. Now before this blind comparison, here is just a real quick palate cleanser microphone. This is the Mayano HD300T. Just wanted to give you something to clean those ears. We're all out of Q-tips, and actually Q-tips are not good to clean your ears with. It pushes the wax back. Hey, fun fact for you. But now that your ears are just hella cleansed, let's go ahead and get into this blind comparison. This is the delightful and delectable sound of microphone number one. This is the delightful and delectable sound of microphone number two. This is the delightful and delectable sound of microphone number three. This is the delightful and delectable sound of microphone number four. This is the delightful and delectable sound of microphone number five. This is the delightful and delectable sound of microphone number six. I'm just hitting you with a big ol' number two test for microphone number two. I'm hitting you with a big ol' number two test for microphone number four. I'm hitting you with a big ol' number two test for microphone number six. I'm hitting you with a big ol' number two test for microphone number one. I'm hitting you with a big ol' number two test for microphone number three. I'm hitting you with a big ol' number two test for microphone number five. 
Here is the third test for microphone number two in this ultra-repetitive blind comparison. Here is the third test for microphone number six in this ultra-repetitive blind comparison. Here is the third test for microphone number three in this ultra-repetitive blind comparison. Here is the third test for microphone number five in this ultra-repetitive blind comparison. Here is the third test for microphone number one in this ultra-repetitive blind comparison. Here is the third test for microphone number four in this ultra-repetitive blind comparison. Up next, we have the results of the blind comparison, so if you want to go back and listen before I tell you, now is the time to pause and go back. Okay, you've been warned. Now here are the results. Microphone number one was the Mayano PDX400 that goes for around $170. Microphone number two was the Samson Q9U that now comes in around $120. And this microphone did have the mid-boost mode on. But here's how it sounds without that mid-boost mode on. Microphone number three was the Shure MV7, and it comes in around $250. Microphone number four was the microphone this video's been about, the Fifine K688, which comes in around $72 to $80. Microphone number five was the F-Deuce SL40 that comes in anywhere from $80 to $100. There are a few clones on Amazon of this microphone, and I'm pretty sure they're the exact same. Microphone number six was the Fifine K658, which usually goes anywhere from $72 to $80. Well, now I've done the edit on the first section of this video. I've listened to the comparison a bunch, listened to this microphone a ton, and now I'm finally ready to give you my opinion on the Fifine K688. First, I just want to tell Fifine, great job on this microphone. You listened to what people were saying about the K658 and what they didn't like, and you improved it on this microphone. Aside from one thing, I think you pretty much nailed everything that I said that I wanted differently with the K658. I understand this isn't like a replacement for the K658, but in my mind, it kind of is. With this being a USB XLR combo microphone, I don't really think I'll be recommending the K658 to anyone. And the one thing I was referring to that didn't get fixed or updated was the fact that this microphone still is capped at 16-bit at 48 kilohertz. Now, I completely understand that 16-bit at 48 kilohertz is pretty much the standard. It's, it's good. So the USB mode is capped at that. It would be nice if it was at least... 24 bit at 48 kilohertz and i'm sure that some people are like well you're saying 16 bit at 48 kilohertz is plenty good why are you even mentioning this and i get that that's a good question but to me i have to look at the pros and cons and the competition to this microphone and for instance the microphone the f deuce sl40 it does 24 bit up to 96 kilohertz so i just like pointing out what can be improved upon and emphasize that it would be nice in future editions to see that but when it comes to pretty much everything else i think that this microphone does a fantastic job for its price point the build the accessories the capabilities the functionality it's just all really nice now with that price tag there are a few compromises and i think that 16 bit at 48 kilohertz is kind of one of those compromises and on top of that i will say this microphone doesn't handle plosives like incredibly you definitely have to be a little bit careful however this microphone grill and everything is a pretty common size so you can actually get bigger foam windscreens and put them on this microphone if you want to for instance this is the rode windscreen this is the one that's used for like the procaster broadcaster pod mic stuff like that. And it definitely does a good job, a better job at eliminating plosives compared to the windscreen that comes with this. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Interestingly enough, I actually think the SM7B big foam windscreen fits this the best out of all the big foam windscreens I have. So either one of these windscreens is definitely an upgrade to the provided one. And I mean, it makes sense you're dealing with a lot thicker foam. But if you don't mind having a gigantic foam windscreen on your microphone and you want a little bit better plosive rejection, you could look in this direction. As I mentioned before, the other complaint that I do have is these knobs on the back. The fact that the headphone volume control knob isn't next to the headphone jack is confusing and just kind of odd. It screwed me up a couple times, but it just takes some getting used to. Now when it comes to the sound of the microphone, I do think it sounds good. My biggest complaint with the sound of it would just have to do with the low end. But people that have naturally lower voices than I do, 
I think this microphone could work well for them. But overall, I do think the sound is good, absolutely passable. This was in the corner of this whole video. It's it's an air blower. It's not anything freaky, just so you know. <laughs> I've been wanting to go away from the letter grades for a little while because I think some people get confused by it. If you were like a straight A student in school and I give a microphone a C, you might think that microphone sucks. When in all reality, a C is average. But each individual's understanding and feeling towards letter grades is very different. I mean, like, C's get degrees, man. I've gotten quite a few comments where someone was like, hey, you said you liked this microphone and recommend it. Why'd you give it a B minus? And I'm like, dude, a B minus is a good grade. So I think the numbering system is going to be a lot more straightforward and easier to understand. Now, let me just put the graphic that I made for this up on the screen right now so you can just read it real quick and understand this rating system a little bit better. Now with this rating system, we're only going up by 0.5s. There's no like 0.2s or anything like that. Now with that all being said, I give the Five Fine K688 an eight. So overall, I absolutely do recommend this microphone. Are there a couple things I wish were different? Yes, but I still think it is a very solid product at a very good price. Now I wanna say a quick thank you to Five Fine for sending the K688 over for me to test out. I wanna send another thank you out to you for watching this video, you're awesome. An even bigger thank you to everyone that's subscribed to the Audio Hotline, you are amazing. And the biggest thank you to everyone that's a member of the Audio Hotline. Oh, hot damn. Those names are looking really good up on the screen right now. If you wanna look as hotty, hotty, hot, hot as them, you can press join down below. But once again, thank you all for watching this episode of the Audio Hotline. I'll see you audio nerds next time.